What up YouTube, it's your boy Topaz Yates back with another episode of In Depth. Here on In Depth, we go in depth on certain news topics and such because the news media never fucking does that shit. But this episode is going to be a little different because we're going to jump into this whole BET award show that went down and shit, man. In which, let me tell you like I tell you every year, did not watch that shit. In which later on in this episode, I'm going to go into why I'm never going to watch not only the BET Awards ever again, but I'm probably done watching BET all fucking together. But before that, but before that, let's talk about what went down in this award show and such, because I know people love to hear about that, man. And which, let's talk about these winners and shit that happened. Kendrick Lamar, congratulations to that man, one of the best hip-hop artists, and you know, that's well deserved, they actually got that one right. Nicki Minaj, best female rapper, like quite honestly, I feel as though she's like Lecrae, where Lecrae won the best gospel rapper and such, like, somebody's gonna have to come so damn big to dethrone them from constantly winning this shit over and over and over. This year, they had the best R&B slash pop genres and shit for male and female, which that's a bit of a fucking slap in the face for R&B, but they gave it to Chris Brown, I guess Chris Brown as the male vocalist and shit, they're finally trying to forgive him and shit, and then you got Beyonce winning the female one, in which Beyonce pretty much cleaned up with a bunch of these other awards and shit that happened, but best group Ray Shemard, in which, if I were to tell you that's the reason why I'm never going to watch BET again, would I be justified? I think I would be, but that's not the fucking point. Like, this year they didn't do as bad as they did in previous fucking years, but still, they're not in tune with fucking hip-hop, dude. Next, let's talk about these ciphers that went down, man. Honestly, my favorite one was the live cipher because them dudes could fucking spit. Like, the two dudes that had the chemistry to go back and forth in a cipher, that was pretty damn dope. I mean, I really believe they blew Remy Martin and Papu's joint from the last year out of the fucking water. But all of the live verses, man, were pretty fucking dope. The beatbox cypher was unique, and I definitely enjoyed the fuck out of that, especially since they went and got the viral sensation chick, man. She did her motherfucking thing, but you just had to overall enjoy the whole beatbox. Especially with the fake scratching and shit while making the damn noise and shit, that shit was dope. The Death Squad Cypher, man, I was happy to see Death Squad together doing some shit, you did. Honestly, I felt as though Good Man was the best out of the group, but yet, I don't feel as though that group Cypher was that amazing either. It was more just happy to see these guys back doing some work. I feel as though the best of the up-and-coming people in such man would be Tink and Vince Staples, but yet, they weren't over-the-top phenomenal with it. It's just... A lot of the others just wasn't anywhere close to them. I did like that dude Jackie Spade though. Like he definitely needed to do more though. Like he he showed that he had some core basic skills and shit, man. But he just as soon as he started, it felt as though it fucking ended. Charles Hamilton was fucking terrible, dude. Like this is why you only come prepared for ciphers and all of that shit because it doesn't matter if you spitting that shit off the top of your head. People gonna remember you for not being that damn good. You get no extra points, nigga, for spitting some shit off the top if it's not fucking great. But then there was a bunch of dudes like that Joyner Lucas dude who spit like fucking Eminem and not even like 2000s Eminem we talking like 98, 99 Eminem when he was first coming in the fucking game that shit couldn't fucking respect it then there was some dudes in there that sounded like Andre 3000 I'm like I can't respect none of that shit either then that musical cypher and shit dude Honestly, that was shameless fucking promotion by BET. But quite honestly, I'm happy we got a good verse out of Black Thought from that shit, man. But other than that, that was just weak. But now that we're done with the whole entertainment part, man, let's talk about why I'm never watching BET ever again. And I'm hoping no one else will as well. Do you guys remember BET reporting and trying to reprimand black people and such over the whole Ferguson and Baltimore riots and all of that shit, man? I do. Now, did you guys catch that BET did not at all even try to document the Million Man fucking march you did? And which, come on, dude, the amount of star power that was at the damn Million Man march from J. Cole to Diddy, it rivaled what they had at the motherfucking BET Awards. And you cannot be slamming all fucking community asking for fucking peace when it's riot time and shit, but then when a peaceful movement of over 800,000 people estimated and shit, which I'm pretty sure it reached over to a million. When that happens and you got 
nothing to say, you cannot have it both fucking ways. But quite honestly, this tells us a lot about BET. My favorite author said, man, that BET is just like the black section that's in fucking Walmart. It's all owned by the white conglomerate and shit. They just put something in the promoting that shit to us and shit, man, but ultimately they're using that against us. See, all BET, the black president, the so-called black media and shit, man, all this is is used against us to pacify us into accepting white massa for oppressing us and shit. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there. And you can go to DownloadPads.com, that's down there, to read today's article.